but we'll see. I, I believe our guest is there, sir. He is, and I'll uh, I'll couch the intro the same way that I couched it before. I wish uh, when you go to the dictionary and look up hockey player, this man's face appears. Uh, the recently retired player of over 1,100 games in the National Hockey League and never mailed in a single shift. He is Ian Laperriere. He joins us now. Ian, thanks for thanks for being aboard, and first of all, congratulations on an outstanding career. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me here. Now, when when you look back at it, because it's funny because when I, I was talking to, to Greg about this a couple of weeks ago, whenever I look at whenever I look at um, at Dan Bilesma in Pittsburgh, I always think of you because I think of you two guys killing penalties in Los Angeles. When you look back on your career, Ian, what comes to your mind right away? What are the moments that stand out for Ian Lapierre? Ah, uh, you know what? Uh, every 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 game I enjoy. You know, like I don't, I do have you know like two years ago when we went to the finals. For sure, it's kind of stick in my mind for. Good and bad reason that we lost, but just the right was something. But uh, I'm really one of those guys like who really enjoy my moment as a player, and uh, I felt you know privileged to be able to wear an NHL jersey. You know, it was a dream of a little boy from Montreal just to play one game, and I was fortunate to play over a thousand games, which you know I'm very thankful for. It. Uh, many of those games were during nine seasons with the Los Angeles Kings. What were your thoughts in seeing the Kings finally win the Stanley Cup this year? Yeah, it's great. You know, I watched the game, the final game with my kids. Well, actually, we watched the last three games with my kids, and uh, and that's way past their bedtime. But uh, Daddy was kind of uh, <laughs> nice to do that just to for them to see the cup being raised. But it's uh, it's. You know, I was very happy for the Kings, you know, for the organizations, for everybody who's been there for, for so long. And to watching really, really bad hockey and watching really good, well, not really good, yeah, really good hockey, a little bit of both, but mostly bad hockey. And uh, just for them to get the cup, I think it's great for the fans to be able to enjoy a, a great summer with the Stanley Cup. Was it was it a little bit uh, bizarre, maybe surreal? Because this, you know, the Los Angeles Kings organization has been called Philadelphia West for quite some time now. Uh, what were your feelings on seeing so many ex Philadelphia Flyers on that team raise the Stanley Cup? Well, I, you know what? It's, uh, I think it's great for guys like Simo Gagne, Carson, Richie, and Williams who played great playoffs. And I mean, it's hockey, guys. Like you make trades, and those guys went on, and they fit perfect there. Especially you know Carter and Richard, like. Uh, being, you know, secondary scoring there, I think it's a better fit for them. And obviously, Dean Lombardi said the same thing. And when he made those trades, you know, got Richard from us and got uh, Carter from Columbus, they worked out perfectly. And those guys were uh, a big part of that Stanley Cup. But, uh, you know, you get, you get guys like Jonathan Quick, who's, you know, he, he was known as a good young goalie, but now he just put himself as a superstar, which was great. You know, I was thinking about you, Lappy, during the uh, playoffs when, when shot blocking became a big story. The Rangers blocking all those shots and people saying, ooh, shot blocking, it's so bad for hockey. It makes hockey unwatchable. It stops offense. And here you are. You're, you're a guy who, you know, made his bones blocking shots. Do you think there's anything wrong with blocking shots uh, as a man who's I, seen probably the best and worst of shot blocking in this league? You know what? It's, I thought the playoffs were unbelievable this year. Correct me if I'm wrong, but but you're always going to find people whining about everything. You found people whining about, okay, a couple of years ago the game was too slow. Now the same people are whining the game's too fast, and you got concussions left and right. You know, you're always <laughs> going to find people that you know are looking for something to complain about. But I really do think the game was great to watch in the playoffs and. Uh, I mean, like, those guys give their all out there. Blocking shots like they did. The Rangers surprised me uh, most of the team. They did that all year. It's only in the playoffs. They did that during 82 games. And uh, I really thought it was going to get burned down mentally, and not only because of their coach, but also because of the way they played. And uh, But they did an unbelievable job. They had a great run. And uh, I, don't, I don't think it really hurts our game to see guys blocking shots. You know, when we go back to your draft, the uh, 1992 two draft, there's only two players uh, in it that have played more games than you did. Uh, one is Roman Hamlick, who's played 1,379 games. Um, Sergey Gonchar uh, comes in at number. He's played at 1,132 games, and then you come in at number three with uh, 1,083 regular season games played. Uh, there have been a, quite a lot of achievements along the way. What, and well, by the way, those two were first round picks. You were a seventh round. Pick. Uh, hey, you were a se- like- seventh round pick. A thousand, a thousand game, a thousand eighty three games. What are you most proud of when you look back at your career? Because that's got to be one of them. Yeah, for sure. Like, you know, my, the longevity of my career, you know, the way I played, like, uh, you know, I was a physical player who 
like to mix it up and physically fighting and all that. And like I said yesterday, I look around and at the end of my career, mostly in my 30s, I was looking around and I didn't see too many guys playing my way, played over a thousand games. And that's, that's something I'm proud of. And you know what? It's not really the games. I'm, I'm proud of the games, don't get me wrong, but I'm proud of what I did all, you know, in the summers. That's what people don't see that. I really uh, took care of myself, and uh, that's, that's the key. That's why I try to tell our young guys in the Flyers organization, you know, it's not only what you do during the season, it's really what you do in the summer, and I always took pride of that. Hey, how are you feeling these days, by the way? I mean, you had all that post-concussion stuff going on. How, how's, uh, how's everything going on upstairs? Yeah, I, I feel pretty good. You know, like uh, I still have issues with my I had uh, nerve damage uh, when I took that puck, and I don't really think it's going to go away, but uh, I can deal with that. And other than that, like I'll have my my headaches here and there, but I, I don't know if it's from my concussion or just being, uh, you know, being older or dehydrated or something like that, but uh, I got a pretty normal life. Thanks for asking. You know, uh, what's next uh, for you, Ian? Uh, does coaching interest you, moving into management, scouting? What what interests you these well, days? You know, being with the Flyers, I'll give them that, and I told them, you know, I tell everybody who wants to hear me that they, they've been taking care of me since, uh, you know, since I've been here. And uh, uh last two years, instead of sitting on my couch and be depressed, they send me on road trips to mentor our future, you know, our, our junior kids left and right and go to Glens Falls and our minor leagues, and uh, that's pretty much what I'm going to do uh, uh, next year, the same thing, just uh, mentoring our young guys and make sure they train properly in the summer, and uh, we have a development camp in July that I run, I ran it last year, and I'm running it again this year, and coaching is, if there's something inside me we would like to coach, we'll see it on the road uh, where the opportunities are, but uh, for now, I'm going to concentrate on getting to know those young guys because it's a totally different generation, too. And by me doing that, taking care of the development of, uh, on the fire side, it gives me a chance to get to know those young guys. Last one for me. I mean, just uh, your thoughts on being able to be a part of this Flyers organization. It feels like you really found a home there. It feels like you've got a real, a real connection with Mr. Snyder and everything else uh, with that organization. Yeah, you know what, uh, you hear about it when you play against the Flyers, how, how they take care of their alumni, and it's, uh, and, you know, I, I, I'm witnessing it firsthand, you know, it's, it's, it's been, they've been unbelievable, and as a hockey player, we all know, you know, that it's hard when you do retire, and you you have those worries, what are you going to do, you know, what am I going to do, but those guys really, uh, you know, they, they embrace me, and they, they're taking care of me, which is great, I can't thank them enough. And last one here, you know, when you're a, a young man playing in the Quebec League uh, with Drummondville, did you ever think a, a day in your life that one day in your NHL career you'd have T-shirts that say it's all about Lappy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I made one. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, you know what? It's, it's always nice. It's for a great cause, too. And it's uh, Karen in L.A. who started that, and she's been uh, uh, pretty much my number one fan since I played there, and it's it's all good. I never thought of that, to tell you the truth. You know, I always just wanted to play, but uh, I guess I guess the, the fans really like my friend Jackson, and I seem to connect really well with fans everywhere I go. For good reason. Uh, an honest hockey player who earned every inch of his ice. Uh, I know you're golfing. We'll let you get back to it. Thanks for uh, stopping by today. And, and Ian, con- congratulations on a great career. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having me, guys. Have a good night. Take care, Ian man. Perrier of the uh, Philadelphia. You know, just talking a second ago about the San Jose Sharks and needing a player that's you know been there before. It can bring some snarl to the bench. They can talk to anybody from Joe Thornton all the way down to Andrew Desjardins, and no one can bark back. Oh yeah, what did you do in the NHL? How about Ian Perrier? Look at you, matchmaker. Like, I love that guy. Yeah, look at you. Coach. Have you ever thought about uh, coaching, sir? Because cracks knuckles. I may have an opportunity I can broker Just, uh, for you. I think I have uh, Doug Wilson's uh, <laughs> number here, my black bear. And I can. Uh... <laughs> That's funny. He he is a one of a kind player. It's I mean, awesome. like to have gone. Can you... We've all we've all had our our, our sports injuries. What happened to that cat? Oh man! <laughs> he blocked that shot. Happened to me. Um, how not bad, as, though? I, I, not as bad as him. Yeah. And it wasn't Paul Martin that took the slap shot. It was actually Sean Cullen, the comedian. It was in, a, I play, one of the hockey leagues that I play in, it's, um, it's like a, a league for, uh, mainly industry people, TV and 
radio and a lot of musicians play in it and uh, there's one uh, uh one team called the jokers and they're all comedians right and uh so i go down to block a shot like, who's blocking shots in men's league cullen double pumps on it and there's my face and boom he lets it go He's like, and the minute he let it go he saw in his face like oh my god i shouldn't have shot that and it caught me right in between uh underneath and i was only wearing like one of those quarter visors and even then i pushed it up my head like ohl style so essentially i was wearing nothing Right in my face, like right underneath my nose, busted my nose, 30 stitches, split my lip wide open. Thankfully, didn't mess up, you know, no dental work. So no thank God, busted nose and all that. But you know what it led to, Wish? What? It led to me, I think I've talked about this on the podcast before, going down the K-hole for the first time. Because I went into the hospital and they stuck a needle in the cut to try to freeze it and it didn't take. So they put me under using ketamine. Mm-hmm. That was the first time I'd ever tried Special K. I'm like, okay, now I get it. Because I was like kind of in and kind of out. I'm like, okay, man. Uh, now I under now I understand That's Special funny. K. Wow. Anyway, oh, so right. that it was. And like it looked my front of the jersey looked like it spilled like a bottle of Merlot on it. And it was gross because all the guys on my benches, the referees like leading um, first thing I pop right back up, but you're stunned, right? And like try to go to the corner to get the puck and the ref grabs is like Son, you got to get off the ice. And I'm like, why? Wow, what's the big deal? I looked down on my jersey, and I look like, you know, the Manson murder victim from the night from 1969. And uh, but it was the guys on the bench that it was gross because you could tell when my heart was pumping because every time it pumped, it squirted out of my face. Like it was nice. one of those kind of cuts. Oh, it was bad, dude. So, but that's not anywhere close to what he went. There's a big difference between a, a Sean Cullen slap shot, ladies and gentlemen, and a Paul Martin slap shot. Le Perrier hit with a slap shot in his mouth in 2009 between 50 and 100 stitches and Man, returned to play in the third period. Um, oh, man. He lost seven teeth from the God. incident. Two real, I'm sorry, five real and two fake. Oh, and then man. was, and then had the, uh, the orbital, orbit, orbital bone injury, um, in 2010. Just, God, what a, like you said it, man. Like, listen. We don't like throwing around the word warrior for these guys because sometimes it can be taken the wrong way, but it's pretty applicable for this cat, the way he played. That's, that's admirable, man. That is honest. And remember remember what he said? I mean, right after that, he said, I know I don't encourage people to do this. I know it's stupid. I maybe mean, shouldn't have come back, but my whole life I dreamed about the Stanley Cup. Yeah. Like, And then we talked about this yesterday with uh, the Rob Scuderi you know, turning his back on, on Bernie yesterday. If If you ask any hockey player... Will you deliberately put yourself in significant harm's way in order to win the Stanley Cup? Every one of those guys, by the time you get to the NHL, every single guy will say yes. Yeah. Every single guy. For sure.